everybody thought I was dumb. And according to this transcript here, it looks like I would have never have made it in the world. But here I am, a millionaire in real estate by the age of 28. How did I achieve this? I'm gonna tell you in this video. What's up, Fruitful Investors? So in this video, I'm gonna get a little personal which is what I like doing. You know how transparent I am. I give my net worth all the time. You can even access that on my, on my website and see every single property I've done. So I'm super transparent. And in this case, I'm gonna deep dive into the grades of how I performed in high school because I really believe that the school system is really lacking a lot of real world skills. It's really failing a lot of kids, especially entrepreneurs and those who have an entrepreneur mindset. The, normal school program is really failing a lot of people and I really want to alleviate that stress because a lot of you guys who are watching this video are in your early 20s or you're even in high school and you're thinking, man, how the hell can I escape the rat race? How can I you know, not go to college and do the typical thing of getting a degree, finding a good job and just chilling nine to five in a job I hate? So I really want to hopefully inspire you and motivate you that, that anything can happen. You know, I became a millionaire in about five or six years through real estate and I didn't even know I was a millionaire. If you watch the videos on my channel, you'll see that. I had no idea I was a millionaire. So real estate is very powerful. It creeps up really quick in terms of wealth and uh, it's not that hard guys and girls to become a millionaire and become very wealthy in real estate or cryptocurrency or stocks, whatever your thing is, mine is real estate. We'll talk a bit about that in this video. But before we get into that, I just wanna do a little backstory on me. So in high school, you know, I was more of like a punk rock skater kind of kid. I, I was obsessed with skateboarding, still am, but more so uh, into surfing now. Uh, but I was really that type of guy in high school. You know, I was in a very popular band at the time, a rock and roll band in Kitchener. So I was living like a skateboard life, you know, rock and roll uh, lifestyle. And even in my early 20s after high school, we were in a pretty serious band. We made a music video. Okay, I'll pretend I didn't show you that. But I was all about having fun, you know, hanging out with friends, skateboarding, playing in a band. That was my high school thing. In school, really did it interest me. When I wanted to apply myself, I could do very well, which you'll see on the transcript on some of the courses that I really like, like construction or gym, you know, obviously those classes. Um, I did very well music, I did very well because I was passionate about those topics. When it came to English, French, math, science, I didn't give two shits about that. It didn't interest me. So I did the bare minimum to pass. And a lot of my teachers uh, thought I was probably stupid. And even one time in, uh, I forget which class it was, either English or history, I was literally failing that course. And I had to do very well on this one essay. And I applied myself, you know, I'm not stupid. And I wrote a good essay for that, that time. And the teacher actually thought I ripped it off and stole it because Historically, my grades and my papers were shit, but this essay out of nowhere was good to her, so she kind of questioned me, and I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, she came to the conclusion I actually did write it, which was funny. If you want to do well in life, you know, don't dwell on your high school courses or your performance in school. And if you're a parent watching this, I urge you that if your kids are, aren't doing well in school, it might mean something else. Maybe they're not made you know, uh, mentally to be good at academics. Maybe their talents lie in entrepreneurism or the, the trades or whatever, or being on their own. So just take note of that. And moving on, before I show you this transcript, I just wanna point out, like I said, when there was things I was passionate about, I did very well. And that was something I always knew as a kid. I, I don't wanna talk about myself too much or brag or whatever, but I just wanna show you the whole backstory just so you can relate, because this might be you. And a lot of entrepreneurs I found think alike. We're very similar, so this might connect with you. But when I was younger, you know, even like seven, eight, nine years old, uh, I always knew deep down that I would do something big or something awesome, that I would be well off financially. You know, if you know my story, my parents were pretty frugal and we lived pretty poor, you know, lower middle class. So I always knew that I would do something. I didn't know what, uh, but I always knew I would do something. And it wasn't even until about age 22, 23, when I really started to come into myself and know who I am, that I realized then 
that, hey, I'm an entrepreneur type mind. I was never meant to do well in school. I was never meant to have a job and be an employee. And uh, so that, again, I wanna urge that if you have a child in high school, you know, get to them earlier. I wish someone got to me earlier you know, when I was 16, 17, and kind of watched me and been like, hey, you know, I don't think this academia thing is for you. You should really focus on something else. Luckily, everything turned out pretty well for me. I'm not gonna complain. Things happen for a reason, right? So let's get right into the transcript and show you my courses and how I did in high school. Let's get right into it. So as you can see, we'll start at the very beginning. So in grade nine English, I got a 62 uh, percent. So that is very terrible. Obviously, it's not failure, you know, but that's pretty bad for, especially for the language that I speak. Uh, next up, right under it, we have French, grade nine French, 65. Now, why that's noteworthy is because I am French. So my first language was French. So it just shows you that uh, I did pretty bad in school. I didn't really care too much, unfortunately. I should have cared a little more, but like I said, everything happens for a reason. It worked out in the end. Scrolling down to grade 10 civics. I don't even know what civics is. I can't even tell you what that is, but I got a 54. So grade 10 civics, 54. That is pretty much a pity pass. I should have probably failed that course. Grade 11 Canadian law, 62%. So which is kind of funny because my business now is a lot about legal matters, you know, dealing with real estate and making offers. But back then I didn't even care about legalities or law or anything. So it's really funny how life works out. Grade 11, history, 57%. Mathematics in grade 11, 60%, which is hilarious because my whole life now is based around math and adding numbers, finding cap rates, finding ROI, etc. Everything to do with my life now is math, but I hated math in high school because it didn't apply to me in real life. I was learning about parallelograms, finding X, doing all these stupid equations that meant nothing that I knew would serve me uh, at all. So, and one of the things that's funny is that in high school, a lot of the students would complain to the teachers, you know, my friends would always say, why are we even learning about solving X or finding the angle of a triangle? This is literally not going to help me in life at all. And it always stumped the math teacher, but they always came up with some stupid response like, oh, it helps you build critical thinking skills for later in life, etc." Absolute bullshit. Bullshit. What kids should learn in school is how to do well in real life. It's one thing we don't learn at all in this school system is how to be a functioning person in society. We never learn how to do our taxes. Not once in school did I learn how to do taxes properly, how to uh, speak to different types of people, learning the different types of personalities. You know, they say there's 14 to 16 types of personalities out there. Learning those things in high school before going to the real world would have been very beneficial. Learning how to talk to introverts versus extroverts, etc. We don't learn anything about real life. We just learn a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of dates that happen back in history. And yes, we have to learn these things to a certain degree. I'm not saying we should just scrap the whole school system, but we're literally not learning anything on how to be a functioning person in society, how a mortgage works, how much to put down on a house, like not, none of that, it's disgusting. Let's get back into the transcript, going down to grade 12 math, 52%. So that was definitely a pity pass. And I wanna add that all of these courses I took throughout all high school were applied courses, which means it was the easy courses. I did not take the academic route. So this is even more disgusting because these are all like the easy, easy classes. Grade 12 English. 53%, which is really hilarious because I, I write books now, I write courses, uh, I'm writing blogs. So my whole job now is English and math, which is things I traditionally did very terrible in. So I just wanted, I just wanted to point that out. Again, um, I didn't really fail high school in terms of like failing courses and having to go to summer school, but what I was was a failure in high school. So like, a lot of these courses I, I really should have failed, but the teacher probably was just like, hey man, I'm just gonna pass you because I don't want you in my class next year again. So I just wanna show you that your high school grades or your school grades, even your college and university grades don't mean anything to how you're gonna succeed in life. Entrepreneurism and self-education is really the future. Like I say to a lot of people who are uh, some of my students and some people who contact me, 
when they went to university or college and they wasted 30, 40, 50, 60 grand with nothing, I always want to tell people, imagine if you spent that 40 grand on a expert who you want to do something in, who was your personal expert and taught you one-on-one. -on -one. So imagine you want to get into real estate and you paid a coach or maybe someone like me 40 grand to teach you only one-on-one -on -one for an entire year. I guarantee, I guarantee you would, you would get way, way more value than spending 40 grand on a general uh, degree or diploma taught by professors who are also broke. That's why they're professors. And even like the top professors only make 150, 200, $250,000. That's, if you want to learn about money and how to succeed in life, guys, people who make 200 grand a year, like that's, that's not very good. When it comes to high levels of success, if you want to be comfortable and live a mediocre life, fantastic, learn from those people. But if you really want to learn from the high players in real estate or starting a business or cryptocurrency or stock markets, guys, that is absolutely nothing. And that's really what I want to urge you. I'm not trying to say that, uh, I don't know, to be loud or <laughs> brash, but those people don't know anything about money, those professors. Most of them don't know anything about living a real life and actually crushing it, which is why they're stuck teaching at a university. So again, I want to go back to the backstory a little bit of how I became a real estate investor now. Now that you've seen my grades, how did I become a millionaire by age 28? So I started off as a carpenter right after high school. Uh, I got into carpentry at age 17. I worked in a job uh, that was okay. It was a really small company, so it was really good. I got that one-to-one -one mentoring. I did my apprenticeship as soon as I got into that company, which is why I really believe in apprenticeship style, one-on-one -on -one training, because I did it as a carpenter. It was fantastic. And I learned that trade really, really quick. And at that time, I was obsessed with carpentry. I didn't even know really about real estate or investing or flipping houses. I was just obsessed at that time with working hard, working nine to five, getting my hourly rate as high as I could get it, you know, hustling, and uh, which is very terrible. I wish I had someone at, at that age, like these videos, you know, I didn't have YouTube at that time to follow other people who were doing well. So I just did what everybody else, I did what my dad did. My dad was a carpenter, his dad was a carpenter. So I thought I'll be the best damn carpenter I can be. And I believe I did for the amount of time I was in it. I was totally obsessed. I worked all day. I came home. I studied more carpentry. I watched videos on HGTV and other shows, Mike Holmes at that time. I was obsessed with it and I wanted to get really good. By age 19, I started to learn about real estate investing. I learned about flipping houses through watching HGTV, which is how I kind of got into real estate in the beginning. Um, and I thought like, hey, what is this real estate investing? I should really look into this. Again, when, when I get obsessed with things, I dive right into it head first, want to become the best. So things started clicking and making sense. So I went to the bank, I actually got approved for my first mortgage at age 19, but I didn't end up buying a property until age 22 because I wasn't managing my money very well. You know, at that time I was making $15 an hour, I believe, which was a really good rate at that time for like a second year apprentice, third year apprentice. So I thought I was killing it, but it took so damn long to save up uh, money. I was also spending it as well on stupid shit at the same time. Um, so I bought my first rental property at age 22. Uh, it was actually on my 22nd birthday that I firmed up on the deal. And on that day, I also quit my job. And I was also in my last block of schooling for my apprenticeship program. So I was 22. I just quit my job, so I got no more money coming in. I just bought a property that's gonna cost me money, and I just started my own business with no clients. I was actually my first client. I renovated my rental property, I took pictures, I made my own crappy ass website back in 2011. You know, websites weren't that easy to make. I put all the pictures up, I was advertising on Kijiji, and I made my uh, construction business solely helping real estate investors in Kitchener, Waterloo, and Cambridge. So I was only renovating properties for investors because I understood that market. I was, an, I was now a real estate investor. I researched a lot into it. The types of properties I was renovating when I was in my apprenticeship the whole time were townhomes for Ontario housing. So I was working in uh, low budget housing and our renovations were low budget renovations. So I already knew how to renovate properties on a very low budget, how to make them look pretty damn good. 
So I had a lot of experience uh, getting into becoming a real estate investor, which is why I say I'm not upset with how my life kind of progressed. I'm glad it did actually the way it did because I learned uh, all the skills and things just kind of worked out. So bought my first property 22, started my construction business. Six months later, I bought another townhome in that same complex that Rachel and I actually lived in as our primary residence. And I didn't buy another property for about three to four years after that because I didn't have any more money. When I was a carpenter in my own business, let's face it, I wasn't making very much money. I was only making about 30, uh, 40 to 50,000 a year, I believe, uh, which is not enough money to keep continue to buy more real estate. So I started thinking I should become a real estate agent because I was meeting so many real estate investors at real estate investing events like Rain, the Real Estate Investment Network. And a lot of these investors were telling me, Matt, I wish I had a realtor like yourself in Kitchener who could help me buy properties because you know so much about renovations. The realtors I'm working with know nothing about renovations, how to flip houses, uh, how to attract quality tenants. You already know all these things because I was renovating their houses. They were already my clients. So I, I put two and two together. You know, I said, I, I, I need to make more money to be able to live the life of freedom that I want. You know, I can't do construction for the rest of my life. It's backbreaking labor. I need to do something else. And this makes perfect sense. Becoming a realtor, I'm already obsessed with real estate and doing real estate transactions. I might as well fill the void and become the real estate investment expert realtor in Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge. That's exactly what I did. And that's when my life really started to change because I hired a marketing coach to help me learn about marketing online and attracting clients. I knew that I was an introvert personality. Uh, meeting people and shaking hands at real estate events is cool. I like doing that, but it's not really my first go-to. I'd rather market online such as this, provide content, make videos, and have people actually come to me. That works so much better for my personality. And this marketing coach helped me exactly do that. He helped me build uh, how to write books, how to build email funnels, how to give content, write blogs. And my, I had real estate investor clients coming to me very easily, which was fantastic. But what also happened when I, at the same time doing that, I was attracting partners who wanted to partner with me and buy real estate with me. They were watching my videos, watching my tips and said, Matt, you know exactly what you're doing already. Why don't I just give you my money and you do all the work, you buy the property, you know, you manage it, etc and we'll just do that together. And that's again the second time in my life when things really started to change and my life got a lot better. I was buying at that time, at the very beginning, you know, back in 2015, 2016, I was buying one or two properties a year and then it just kept snowballing. The more testimonials I kept putting online of the properties that renovated, the before and afters, more partners are coming, more partners started coming. Now I'm up to the point where I'm buying four, five, six plus properties a year and life is getting much better financially. And like I said, I reached the millionaire status by age 28. Didn't even realize I was a millionaire until I sat down and added everything up. It was a pretty cool day. But now I'm 29 years old. I actually turned 30 next month. And like I said, I'm already a millionaire, approaching now multi-millionaire status and beyond. Life is good. So again, I just wanna end this video. I think I took enough of your time, but I wanna stress that how you perform in high school and even university and college isn't um, how your life's gonna turn out. You know, things can happen very quick if you apply yourself, if you learn from experts who are already doing what you wanna do, which is what I really wanna stress. If you're right now watching this video and you're 19, 20, 21 years old, and you're thinking, should I go to college? My parents really want me to go to college, but I don't really feel it's right for me. Take a breath. You know, life is long. You can do a lot in a very short amount of time. But I would, what I would say is if you want to do something specifically, learn from that expert itself. Maybe going to college or university isn't the right thing for you. And in fact, it's not the right thing for most people. So let's say you want to be a, a photographer. You're obsessed with photography, making videos, doing weddings, whatever your niche is. Learn from, from a photographer. And it'd be way smarter for you to probably pay someone 20 grand a year as a coach to coach you one-on-one -on -one to start helping you build your business, get clients, how to get clients, etc. That'll go way farther than taking some shitty business course at Conestoga College or any college in your area or even going to university about becoming a, 
a general something. A lot of people take general arts or general science or whatever. I don't even know, man. But uh, not always a smart choice to do post-secondary. It's been a lie that we've been told all the time from our parents, our neighbors, and it just gets told over and over and over again because nobody really looks into the goddamn stats of how people are performing um, in school. But I do, in a sense, because I, I meet people all the time, young people all the time, come up to me or, or message me and say, Matt, I spent 40 grand on this degree. I got nothing from it. I'm now in debt. I can't find a job to even pay off the debt. You know, this school system screwed me. So this is why I want to make this video. Again, I believe in transparency. A lot of people wouldn't do what I just did for you, but I, I love transparency. I love telling you my journey, how things are going, how they were, what I came from, because I really, really hope it inspires people and motivates you to do well in life. The best compliment I can get is when people come up to me or message me and say, Matt, you know, you've helped me change my life. You helped me buy real estate. Now I have no debt. Now I'm living the life I want on my terms. That's awesome. That's way worth more than me than money. Money is cool. I love money. You guys already know that. I love living life on my terms and money is the best way to do that. But I also love helping people a lot and uh, being a part of their success. So if you like this video, if you learned anything, please click like right below to get access to my 12 free video series on how to get started in investing in real estate. You can also find that free course right below. And to find out more about my real estate investing apprenticeship program, about how you can partner with me one-on-one -on -one and we can buy properties together and I can be your one-on-one -on -one mentor, you can find out more about that by clicking right about here. I'll see you in the next video.